Okay, so I'm going to go over the calculations to find the velocity of a ball shot from a launcher. And then I'll show you how to do it. Okay, with an actual launcher. Okay, so let's say there's really two options that you could do that wouldn't be super hard. And I would go with for the things that aren't super hard. So an option number one is to shoot the ball straight up. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So let's say here's my launcher and there's my ball. And so I shoot it and it goes and it comes back down, straight back down. Perfect shot. Okay, again, there's only two things I can measure. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's start off with this is the initial velocity V0. This is just in one dimension because it's just in the Y direction. And so it starts at, let's say it starts at Y equals zero. It goes a height of H. And then it takes a time of T to get to the top. So it's delta T, let's call that. So you could say, well, look, I have the height, I have the time, I could find the velocity. That, that doesn't work, okay? Because this is not a constant acceleration problem. You can't see me while I stand over there. There. Uh, so it's not a constant acceleration problem. So you could say the V average velocity is change in Y over change in time. But it's not the velocity. Well, I can, I can use that. Because I know that at the highest point, the velocity is zero. So up here, the velocity is zero. So this is going to be average velocity is the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two because it has constant acceleration. So it's going to be zero plus V zero divided by two. So now I, I know everything. If I measure the height and I measure the time, I can find the velocity. So this is going to be H. This is going to be T. So I get V zero equals 2h over delta t. Okay, so I can measure the time it takes to get to the highest point, measure that velocity, I mean the, the height, and then I can get the velocity. Okay, there's another way to do it. What if I shoot the ball up and measure the total time? So in this case, I would, I would call that 2 delta t. I'm going to use the same value. No, let's call that delta t 2. So that's the time to get back down here is delta T2. In that case, what's the height? Well, I don't know. I didn't measure that. I only measure the time to go up and back down. If you look at the kinematic equations and the definition of average acceleration, we get average acceleration is a change in velocity over change in time. Now, I have to use a trick here. I know that if I launch it up with a speed V0, when it gets back down to the same height, it's going down with the same velocity, but in the opposite direction. So I also know that once it leaves the launcher, its acceleration is negative 9.8 or negative G. So I can say negative G equals the change in velocity is going to be the final velocity, which is negative V0 minus the initial velocity of V0 over delta T2. This is delta T2, the time it takes to go up and back down. So these two, Negative V0 minus V0 is negative 2 V0. So I get negative 2 V0 over delta T equals negative G. So if I solve that for V0, I get V0 equals G, that's a delta T2, delta T2 over 2. So this is just, this is check. Meters per second squared times seconds gives us meters per second. And 2 has no units. Okay, so I'm going to put this one up here. V0 equals G delta T2 over 2. Where G is 9.8, not negative 9.8. Okay, so that's two ways to get that. Um, now, you could, there is another way. You could somehow record the time it takes to go a very short distance and assume that it doesn't accelerate. Um, and that would that would work too. And then you say delta, delta y over delta t. Okay, but but how would you do that? You couldn't do that with a stopwatch. Um, now, and and with these two, which what's going to be the most uncertain values here? H is going to be uncertain, right? Uh, delta t is going to have a larger uncertainty than delta t two. Well, kind of. Uh, it's going to be easier to time it for a longer time. So that's something that you want to think about when you're making these measurements, which would be better. But those are two ways. There, there are more ways. Okay, those are two ways. Now let's look at another case.
Okay, so now I take the launcher and I shoot it horizontally a height h above the ground and it travels a distance x before hitting the ground. And so this is launched with the same initial velocity, v0, but in the x direction. So your first case would be to say, okay, well, I know that once the ball leaves the launcher, it has a constant x velocity because the force is in the negative y direction, so it doesn't change the x velocity. So that means that I can use the following, v0 equals delta x over delta t. It's constant velocity in the x direction, so I don't have to worry about it changing its velocity. I don't have to worry about the average velocity. That is the average velocity. Okay. So if I measure x and I measure delta t, that's it. Okay. Beep, beep. Stopwatch. Measure how far it hit with carbon paper or something like that. That's it. Okay. So that's one way. Now, of course, this is going to, if you have this a meter high, it's going to take not very long to hit the ground. And, and you're doing the stopwatch thing. So it's pretty quick. Um, okay. So there's a better way to get the time. And that's to look at the Y motion. In projectile motion, X motion and Y motion can be treated independently. So in the Y motion, it starts with an initial velocity of zero in the Y direction, and it follows a distance H. So I could say Y equals Y zero plus V zero delta T plus one half minus minus one half g delta t squared. That's your kinematic equation. I'm not going to derive it, but that's that's what that is. Can you see that? Okay, probably. Okay. And so in this case, I know that the final y is zero, the initial y is h, the initial y velocity is zero. So I get zero equals h minus one half g delta t squared. Uh, and I can solve this for delta t. So I, I add one half g delta t squared to both sides. One half g delta t squared equals h. Solve for delta t. Delta t equals the square root of two h over g. So if I, instead of recording the time with the stopwatch, I record the height and I calculate the time. And that will have uncertainty too because there's an uncertainty in the height, but it's gonna be a lot smaller. So if I put that in up here for that same equation, I get this for delta t, putting it up there, I get v0 equals delta x, which is my x, right? That's how far it went, divided by this, which is gonna be, let's put it like this, the square root of g over 2h. So this is check our units, this is uh, meters, this is going to be meters per second squared divided by meters, gives me one over second squared, take the square root and I get one over second. So I get meters per second. So it does give me the right units. So that's a good thing. Okay, so that's four different ways to calculate the velocity. Now, the question is, are there any other tricks you could do to measure the times or the heights or stuff like that? And yes, there are. Okay, but those are your four basic methods for calculating the launch velocity.